Passover, Easter, and yet <laughs> reporting for duty. <laughs> you, you could uh, we could rename our podcast like a Jew and a bald guy. <laughs> I mean, sir, I mean, something like that might pop more than just Haberman. Like, what's your guys? A Jew you know, whenever some bald guy, <laughs> you know, when everyone goes like, "What's your podcast name?" Yeah, and we're like Haberman Middlecoff. And if they don't know who you are, just right. those are our last names. Just Let like me spell that for you. But if you're yeah. like, "What's your podcast?" Jew and a bald guy. I don't What's know, it about? You, know, you would agree that would that would immediately you wouldn't forget that. Yeah, I mean, every, each word, the longest word in that is bald, four letters, and um, you know, there's no like silent I or E's or X's or just very straightforward. I'm not saying I'm a genius, but I I don't totally hate. So you guys just talk about religion and hair. Well, we end up talking about none of it, but it just <laughs> it's a very very catchy title, is it yeah. not? Yeah. And and the the logo is uh, the Cowboy Stadium, but with a star of David at the middle of the field, and then you, your head, but your head is a football. I don't know what the uh, uh, Jew and a bald guy. Yeah, it just doesn't add a bug. <laughs> like ham, like ham ham <laughs> turns into something. Yeah, but it's hard to take ham and make that into a logo. It's hard to take ham unless we did a leg of ham. Which we could do. What What if we just went? But it's like, does anyone want to wear a leg of ham? You know. I saw Joey Molinaro has a logo. It's a kangaroo. Yeah, kangaroos, cactuses. You know, I mean, there are some that Joey, just but it's just Joey is like a little kangaroo, right? I I assume that's what that means. Like What's a Joey? Joey's a kangaroo? It's like a baby kangaroo is a Joey, isn't that what the thing is there? Oh, that's what a baby kangaroo is called a Joey. I think so. I assume I that's what. I could be wrong about that. I big fan. I but. I, I I just. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't even think that far. That's kind of, I guess, kind of smart. Yeah. Do you I think mean, most people know that? I don't know. And then you can just go ham, but like the LSU, you know, there's plenty of colleges that it's just three letters or there's plenty of logos that are that, but it's not really a logo. Those are letters, you know. Yeah, see, my, ideas. My, my overall always issue with ham, the logo, or just ham, the word, it's obviously an incredible promo code, right? It doesn't get any easier. Ham, right? <laughs> it's it's easy. It's just, I like a that just is you know the M is weak. If it was like hat, I, I'm, I'm trying to even think hat. No, that doesn't. You know, ham means work. hard as a motherfucker. You know, well, once upon a time, but even that's kind of a weird. Like, what's your your podcast called? Going ham? Like, what what is that? You guys, yeah, a, you agree that the M is just it's about kind of working soft. out. It's just I think mm-hmm. the H is kind of soft. I mean, not to yeah. It's just <laughs> it's just it's it's just soft ham. The word it's just soft. It's soft. You know? yeah. So we just we gotta pivot into something that's a little harder yet, but it's hard, it's difficult. You know, there's no right or wrong answers. Once upon yeah. a time, the guy just said Nike, and everyone in the room, I think there were four of them, said this is the dumbest idea ever. And it's looking back forty years, it's got to be one of the most genius ideas ever. Just the work. It's four letters, Nike. Mm-hmm. It's kind of hard. No one and knows what it means, but no one knows what anything means. Really, it's not about no, knowing what it means. ESPN. ESPN. Well, no. The one now. Have you got? Did you? But I even argue NFL, MLB, NBA. They all just they flow. Or maybe are we just numb to them all? I think you're numb to them. <laughs> Any combination of letters, like if Ham was the name of, if for some reason Phil Knight had named Nike Ham, I think it'd work today. Eh. Ham is a, just a soft part. It's just a soft food. It's a food of a fatty would eat it. You know. Yeah, do, do you think we should maybe crowdsource? People can DM us any ideas, no ideas. short letters. Uh, hit us up in the comment section in the Apple iTunes. So obviously leave a review, and we'll have some uh, some questions, answer some mailbag questions today. But hell, any idea? We are open to it. You people are our, uh, you know, we're all in this together. You know, any fuck. I, we We've thought about it for years, and we haven't come up with anything. Good. Uh, years. Well, because some, well, sometimes you can't do it yourself. You need yeah. help. A lot of times, some great idea comes from like a mom, a dad, a wife, a brother, a friend. Drink it. Who knows? I, I am not afraid to let ideas flow our way. You remember the park by Davis High? Right, right next going. to where the little league fields are. It's kind of it's yeah. It's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you go over uh, the overpass. Yes, a lot of soccer got played there. Yeah, a lot of soccer. No, but there was like a, the actual like jungle gym part of the park, kind of right at the corner. 
you, when you weren't living in Davis yet, but when they built it, I was probably like 10, 11 years old. They basically just had this box and anyone could put their idea of what the park should be called. And they yeah. finally picked one because obviously they're just like, whatever What'd they it, pick. I, I forget the name of it now, but it was, it's, it was an easy name. It was like, yeah, that makes sense. And they put all the other names on like a wall next to it. It's like, yeah, it's kind of genius. I'm like, driving. I'm, uh, I'm driving to Davis for a uh, Passover and uh, you're driving to Davis for Easter. So uh, maybe one of us, can, it's not really convenient location for either one of us, but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the name sucks. <laughs> I mean, like it's like, like, not a Royo. No, somebody it, from Davis. Will tell name us. doesn't suck, but it's just, but my point is that that's the, 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 you know, the, uh, the execution of the name was just crowdsourced. Right. But it ended up with a bad name. Well, the name again, it was just a park for, you know, kids in a place like Davis. I mean, it's it, it's not gonna be like uh, you know, up and smoke tour. <laughs> <laughs> uh well, uh, it all worked out this weekend. If you're if you're not uh, celebrating Passover or Easter, the happy whatever to whatever it is you celebrate. Um, I think one of the great tweets on the internet. Maybe this one not offensive, this one you could be offended by, but in any event. Yeah. It's hard. I mean, I'm not. I, I would say on the religious scale, one to ten, I'm about a zero. Um, I remember going to Catholic mass with my mom a couple times, who is not Catholic, and thinking, "Yeah, this, this isn't." And I was like eight, and I just knew right away, like, "This is not for me." <laughs> I went later again in my early twenties, trying to date this girl again. Not for me. Don't judge for you know. Yeah, but I, a lot I'm of just sitting around without. I'm phone, just not very you know? religious. Hey, uh, here's what I know will be with you for life. A belief system you can carry with you. Free beef. I mean, it's butcherbox.com slash ham. That works. Butcherbox.com slash ham. Free ground beef for life. You get two pounds of free 100% grass-fed, grass-finished ground beef in every order for the life of your membership at butcherbox.com slash ham. I get it. You get it. People who get it send us messages and say they love it. You can go get it too. Yeah, hard to beat, guy. Butcherbox.com. You get boxes of meat sent to you. Eight to 14 pounds of meat, guy. Eight to 14 pounds of meat can feed up to 24 individuals. So you're going to a little Passover. You're going to a little Easter, which has already happened. You could have easily just had a bunch of butcher box meat and fed your family, your family's family, your family's kids uh, with butcher box. It's just in one shipment. Boom, they're on your door, knock on your front door, and then you get what? Free ground beef for life? No big deal. Two pounds, two pounds free ground beef for life. So uh, this is your chance to never have to shop for ground beef again. That's right. ButcherBox giving new members free ground beef for life. Sign up at butcherbox.com slash ham. That's butcherbox.com slash ham to claim this deal. Go get it. Do it. Uh, all right, John. One of the things that happened uh, over the weekend, well, I guess at the end of, of uh, last week, was uh, Debo Samuel went on uh, his Instagram and uh, revealed that since wiping the uh, 49ers from his IG, he's gotten some uh, crazy, crazy DMs. He says death, thre death, death threats, among other things, um, people being uh, people being crazy. And uh, he released a video of it and he basically said he's unfazed. And I believe him. Um, there are two types of people, I think, people that say they're unfazed by social media and aren't and people that say they're unfazed and are uh in the world of professional sports and it's hard because i think everybody if you're uh, a, a person of debo's uh, stature you get a lot of uh, you get a lot of bullshit uh, i would imagine the positive stuff he gets outweighs in terms of volume the bullshit but the bullshit somehow always cuts through all the positive stuff and you hear the negative stuff right uh, 50 compliments and one negative thing and you hear the negative thing so um i watched that video and i thought this is another example of debo samuel being the guy the 49ers thought they were when he uh when they drafted him. I think he's proven time and time and time again that the way he plays is one asset, but the way he conducts himself is another asset for the 49ers. And I was talking last week, unrelated to this, to one of the guys, one of the coaches who was on the South Carolina staff when Debo was there. And he he was just he texted me out of nowhere because he heard us talking about Debo. And he's like, I Debo is one of my all-time favorites. Like, I love the guy. He used to talk about what a good guy is, what a good leader he is, all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, an athlete can take what Debo just went through one of two ways. And I just think it's another reminder. Ultimately, I do think a deal gets done with him. But that aside, his deal aside, 
I think it's just another reminder that what they have in Debo Samuel is kind of everything you want out of a franchise cornerstone. And one of those yeah. things is leadership. Do you know you you and I, you know, in our I claim mid thirties, close to forty, uh, you know, 30, 36, 37. And we lived in a world where we did not have the internet, like in our youth, right? Not like five, six, like we were 10 to 15 years old. The internet was not an everyday thing. I would say, even as I remember checking into our college dorm, you had there were lap like only the richest of rich people I knew had a laptop. You had a hard desktop. The internet was Facebook did not exist. The connection MySpace did, but that MySpace had was relatively new. But I never got on MySpace. Did you? No, I had a fake account um, in the name of Darvin Ham. That was it. <laughs> I, Sorry, right, Darwin. <laughs> I, couldn't didn't he win a dunk contest? Or, Did he? Uh, maybe not. But we lived in, I would say, the up until we were 18, 19 years old, the connectivity at the most extreme was like AOL Instant Messenger. I mean, that that I would say most people yeah. that I knew used. And that was a, that was the main. Yeah. So 18 years of our life, it was not like this. Now the second half has been definitely the last, you know, 15 years, right? But it, you would say Debo who is, you know, 26 years old, really the majority of his athletic prime, right? I'm sure in high school he was kicking ass up till now, has been in this world. So, Because I often say, like, on Friday of this, if you're listening to this on Monday morning or whatever, on Friday, I, I sometimes have to delete Twitter from my phone to protect myself from myself. Like you said, you, you control what you're going to eat by what you get in the grocery store. And it's mm -hmm. so true. Like if you go like, I'll just get one bag of chips and some like couple frozen pizzas, you can easily end up eating those in like three or four days. But if you don't bring those home and you bring healthy foods home, you will probably just tend to eat some of those foods. So I have to delete Twitter. And I've said this forever. Like now the, the, the stats speak for themselves. I think sometimes the, the Elon and everything that's going on, it's like, I, I think we act like Twitter's a little bigger than it is, but regardless, if you're on it, now, he's using Instagram, and I bet his Instagram following is pretty big, and a lot more people are on Instagram than Twitter. But for me, Twitter can overwhelm me. So when I delete it, and I attacked Friday, played golf, hung out, did whatever, it's like it didn't even exist. And clearly, athletes, right, the quarterbacks, some star players, are pretty good at, like, balancing it out. But there are some that struggle. It, it's a challenge. It's easy for anyone to say, a 50-year-old, like, God, fuck, just delete it. It's not that easy. Right. Because it, it also has positives. Like he can connect, he can do stuff like this. But like ultimately, you said, he did not, to me, if he would have come out, like Baker Mayfield said the other day, Baker Mayfield is a fucking starting quarterback that he would like to go to people's cubicles and boo them, which is kind of funny, right? Just in itself in a vacuum, if we're just drinking some beer, like that would be a funny visual if you say it out. But it's pretty stupid. Like ultimately, Baker. Those people that boo you or that they cheer you, and two years ago they cheered you, this year they booed you, have provided every penny. Now, he doesn't realize that because he just thinks the Browns are paying him, but the Browns get the money because of all the fans. And ultimately, whether you have a your relationship with fans is probably ebbs and flows if you're a star player or just a famous athlete. But like I think most high-level guys just know how to handle it. And I'm not, Baker, these were just words. It's not like he actually did something to a fan. But it was just like, you know, do I really want my quarterback saying that? And you just watch Debo kind of making light to it. Because ultimately, it could have been 10 DMs. It could have been 100. I don't know. But it probably was less than – but to him, it feels like a lot. And it's just the situation. He went from the adulate – can you imagine the adulation he experienced during the fall? November, December, and January. Just mm -hmm. in his DMs, mm -hmm. from friends, his text message. It had to be like, is this what Michael Jordan felt like? <laughs> And now it's just getting a little weird. And he and I, honestly hasn't even said anything, right? It's yeah. all like hearsay shit. I like to post, but that said 25 million a year or nothing, right? But, you're, but, but I, I like some posts, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> li li likes are not endorsements. Um, maybe it was just a, hey, man, I appreciate your opinion. Thanks for supporting me. Uh, yeah, I mean, look. Or I wanted to save this to forward to my agent and be like, what do you <laughs> think about this number? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh I, I was listening to Jeff Perlman's book about the Lakers, which the HBO show was based off. And there's a part in the book where Magic gets Paul Westhead fired and L.A. turns on Magic. Like he becomes an enemy. Like they hate him because they just think it's kind of a, sc a scummy thing to do. To Why say, do you get him fired? 
just they, they hated playing for him. Westhead changed their offense after they won the championship, after Jack McKinney got hurt and made it very stagnant. And it was not working. I thought so, he was a running gun guy. Well, he wanted to put his own signature on it. It was Jack McKinney's running gun offense. It was run, but it was like run to a spot and stand there until the ball gets to you. And so Magic says, I want to get, he says in the news, I want to get traded. Like, that's the story. Like, I don't like Chicago, New York. I'd, I'd be good in New York. Of course, he's not going to get traded. He knows that's how he gets the coach fired. So he gets the coach fired. Pat Riley takes over. The first game back at the forum, they introduce like, eh, Magic Johnson. And the place boos like crazy. Like, they boo him. And Magic is kind of rattled. And Pat Riley says, don't do a thing. Just ride it out. Just go out and play. It'll be fine. By the second quarter, they are cheering Magic because Magic's having an incredible game. Like, it's that fast. Layups and, layups and shit. And it's like, there are things about this whole thing that we do with sports that are illogical but we know the deal when you play well there's cheers when you play poorly there's booze and the key to surviving i think as a human is probably surround yourself with people who don't live and die with how you played that day who like you for you right and that's i would have that's really hard i think as an athlete if you don't have people with you from before you were rich and famous to find a good core of people around you that treat you the same no matter how you're playing and especially with social now you can get all kinds of feedback for better or worse, right? But I think to your point, it's not about fighting that reality, which is some of this is unfair. There's no amount of money that can make you happy if everyone's telling you you suck. So what if you're rich? You know, because that's what we say. Like, hey, you're making the money. You got to take it as part of the deal. And that is true. It is part of the deal. But if you're the human involved in it, it can still feel bad and unfair. And what I'd look for in every draft is a guy that can handle that because this is just the deal, fair or unfair. This is the deal. How do you handle it? And Debo can handle it. And I do think as a skill position, I think it's like an NBA player. I think sometimes it's like star baseball players. You know, they, they part of their whole persona is playing into that a little back yeah, and forth. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I would say Me historically, the crowd. it was like that. When we were kids without social media, sure. right? with Reggie Mike Miller, Lervin, whoever, Reggie Miller, whatever. And then it, it actually makes you, it's great for the sport because it, it's going to make people that love them, love them more. And people that hate them, hate them more. It's, it's incredible. Like it's ultimately stuff's good for business. To me, Debo, even if he had said like, fuck, I, I would, it actually just kind of makes his whole thing. The McGlinchy thing, like my offensive lineman, like. Tra Jason Kelsey is, you know, announced his return, and then they had him sing at the the Philadelphia 76er game. His return was the coach at the end of the season. Sirianni was like, you know, I'm just going to send him a keg of beer, and it sounded stupid. He literally announced this thing on the Eagles drinking a keg of beer. Like, I don't think they were kidding, and it just feels like Kelsey, man, just in the trenches, no bullshit, big, you know, a couple kids just eating meat and blocking guys. And McGlinchey, for example, to me, like my offensive lineman, he got in the thing a couple years ago with Grant, and then he went nuts on social media. This year, that picture of him being skinny, and then he does the post. It's like, that feels a little skill guy, not offensive line guy, right? I don't yeah. want my offensive line to be like, who gives a shit, right? And, and that, to me, it's been, he feels like kind of, diva's the wrong word, but just really impacted by it. Like, ultimately, Mike, they're calling you skinny. Who gives a flying fuck? But, like, to an offensive lineman, calling you skinny is the equivalent of what Debo, like, you don't want to be here? Like, it's it's a right. shot at your character, basically. Right. right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it just shows you that different people are impacted. Like, for example, and I don't think he even has Twitter, one guy who has literally been unaffected, at least to the outside, we have never seen Jimmy... He's had to answer, ask some questions, but just zero like, hey, man, you guys, I, hey, I want to say something really quick. You guys are all making fun of me for throwing that shitty pass on Thursday night. I had, he just gets up, wears it, just feels like. What he wears like, is Travis Matthew everywhere. That's what he wears. Looks fantastic. But you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, that's a Patriot. Because yep. they, they perfected it, right? How, if you're the Panthers right now, could you pick Baker over him? Just based on your building's kind of a mess. This is me pushing pushing uh but how, how you know what i mean like th this is what you need like this is what you need um no you could I, I i think the thing my, my final thought on this part of debo is what debo displayed is perspective and i think leaders have to have perspective it's it's a essential quality of a leader is perspective 
and Debo has perspective. And, and to me, there's also a balance. Like the other night, uh, the Timberwolf game against the Clippers. Right. And whoever, it was Harlan and maybe Reggie. And Reggie said, like, you know, John Morant, you know, coming back off this injury, better be, these guys are pretty athletic. Well, I follow him on social media. And within two seconds, he had been like, they love saying my name. You know, one of the, and, and it's like, you know, if I was him too, I, I, I might tweet that too. Like, yeah, oh, this guy you love saying yeah. my name. Yeah. And then I saw his, he, he had a tw- quote the other day that I guess something Memphis says, like, something like, you guys want the smoke. And his thing is like, we run up the chimney. We do it. That's good. Like, you know, do you run from the smoke? We run up the chimney. We we embrace the smoke type deal. Yeah. Like, okay. While he has like his dreads, a couple of them are colored. <laughs> it's weird. He's, you know, one's like purple, one's like red. And he, but he's talking like he's, you know, LT in his prime. Like, fucking bring it, bring it on. <laughs> want, want the smoke to me has become the new uh, mama mentality. Everybody wants, everybody's got mama mentality. It's like a one percenter thing, but somehow everybody wants the smoke. And the thing, like, want the smoke is smoke. Obviously, if it can take out your lungs and kill you, but to me, like, fire would be bad, right? Or like, you want the tornado, like, you know, something that could just take you out. Like, smoke, you can kind of get away from, you know, <laughs> walk right through it. <laughs> yeah. How did this become <laughs> exactly? Like, do you want the inferno or something? To me, it would make a little more sense. All right. Who needs who more, Kyle or Debo? Uh, this was part of the conversation I was texting with this former South Carolina coach the other day. He's like, it's such a perfect marriage because Kyle Kyle made this Kyle made Debo this last year, but he couldn't have just done it without anybody. So if you had to pick one, who needs who more? Um, I think Kyle kind of needs Debo more because if Kyle didn't have guys all over the league, then maybe I'd feel differently. But like Mike McDaniel would know exactly what to do with Debo. You know what I mean? Like if if the if the Niners said we're trading Debo, I think he'd be in Miami tomorrow, or the Jets if he wanted to go there. Or Miami's the, kind of right. taken though now, right? Yeah, that's true. Miami is kind of taken. But my point is, there are the Chiefs. The financially, there's complications here. But my point is, there are other coaches I think that kind of know what to do with Debo because they've seen it now. Doing it the first time is the genius of it. But wouldn't the wouldn't the Packers wouldn't the Packers copy. trade one of their first round picks for him? Why would, Packers you know? would do it tomorrow? So. Uh, I think Kyle needs Debo a little bit more, unless the flip side to that is you believe that Kyle can just do with Debo with uh, Khalil Shakir, right? You can just, oh, we'll find that guy and do it again. So who needs who more? What do you think? Well, I mean, historically, the Shanahan family, (laughs) you would just say they have kind of been known for replaceable offensive assets. Right. And that was more specifically running backs and even quarterbacks. And as we've learned, yeah, I think the quarterback thing is there is a big drop off between your starting quarterback and your backup, but they believe they don't need a top five quarterback to have a team that can compete for the Super Bowl, right? Ultimately, Matt Ryan won the MVP. I would imagine if we really looked at it throughout his entire career, Matt Ryan was never considered a top five quarterback, right? He was even in his peak, probably more of that like seven to 10 guy. Right. But like that was the best version. Kyle was very comfortable with Kirk Cousins. His dad was always comfortable with kind of Jake Plummer. He drafted Greasy. Like I, I, they didn't need John Elway in his prime. And hell, Mike never even got John Elway in his prime. So I, I do think there is, and I say this in a good way, because when you're really good at something, you are just naturally arrogant about your ability to do it. A feel that I didn't make Debo because he was an extremely talented player from the SEC that we had to draft number 32 overall. But he became a star because of our fundamentally fundamental ideas, which is ultimately my baby, which is the offense and the play calls, which we're going to find out like how big of a role Mike had with the, uh, you know, right. Like, was he was he like General Schwarzkopf, like doing a little swarm, you know, or was Kyle also involved in that? Or was Kyle the guy just calling the plays? Because remember, it was like Jim Harbaugh's calling in the plays, even though he has nothing to do with anything. He just relays the plays from upstairs. Wasn't that his deal? It was like Jim wasn't scheming through the week. He actually wasn't calling the play on game day, but he wanted to be the guy that said the play. He, he would just interrupt and <laughs> make life difficult for the real coordinators. Yeah. Now, clearly Kyle's not that, but uh, we're really going to learn. Now, you would say based on Kyle's history, but Mike has always sneaky been there with Kyle. So how many ideas was Mike always throwing him? Mm-hmm. And the one thing you learned about Mike, which I would say that we didn't really know until he got the job and, a lot of deep dives were in him is that he changes position 
when he got to Washington to be like the run game guy. And if you think about it, when they got RG3, they were just a fantastic running operation. And you just you just have to wonder. Now, the Matt Ryan situation was incredible passing, right? He was the MVP because he was throwing the football. You know how many Pro Bowls Matt Ryan has? Not as many as you think. Probably four. Four. Plus a rookie of the year. Yeah, to me, he's like the high end of what Kyle would say he needs, right? Like most people are like, I'd love Mahomes, Josh Allen. Like, obviously, you would, but I think Kyle would be like, I'd be very comfortable with this. Yeah. I think most people like uh, the Colts, they just like desperate they got Matt Ryan. Kyle would have been like, I've been good with that like five years ago. <laughs> right? That's, that's kind of what I envision, which is, you could say, a blessing and a curse. Because ultimately, you know, I, I, I do think you always, historically, when you look at the NFL, like most of the teams winning at the highest level, whether they're defensive-led teams or offensive-led teams, typically have Hall of Famers. Right, like, look, the Ravens defense, when Trent Dilfer, yeah, had, like, Ray Lewis, you know? I mean, yeah, and could have won, and maybe could have won more if they had Patrick Mahal. Right, I mean, if we're going extreme. Oh, for sure. But they were able to just win it with a great defense, you know? Like, uh, just some of these teams, like, it's, typically, I bet if we really broke it down, all the teams that have won Super Bowls have had just an incredible amount of Hall of Fame players. Now, Kyle might say, well, we got a crew of guys right now, like, Trent Williams is a Hall of Famer. I think I can make Debo into a Hall of Famer. George just needs to stay on the field. He's clearly, you know, a Hall of Fame talent, right? I mean, Fred Warner should be a five-time Pro Bowler. Like, we got elite guys. Now, it's just on the quarterback situation. Yeah, I mean, I it's a, it's a good thing and a bad thing, not to get too removed from the Debo conversation. It's it's a bad thing if, if a coach is overly confident about what he can get out of a player. Where it's good is it's kind of like, uh, you know, like James Bond can hop in any vehicle, stick shift motorcycle, go-kart, F1 car. Like, if you can drive anything, right, then when you're running from the bad guys, no, it doesn't matter what's parked outside, you can hop in it and drive. Can't catch if, you can, if you can play with any quarterback, it's, it's I, you know, it just it gives you a chance, right? Nick Mullins doesn't get you to the playoffs, but it just gives you a chance in case until your starter gets back. And I think ultimately it's a good thing, as long as the coach doesn't begin to think he can just win with anybody or sees the – you know, the safe quarterback is a better option than the quarterback that has a higher ceiling. And he doesn't believe, I mean, clearly he doesn't believe that after they did what they did a year ago for Trey Lance. Yeah. But the positions are something that we're still learning. Like he got rid of DeForest, right? I mean, I'm not saying he, they're going to, I do not expect Debo to not be on this team, but it's going to be very fascinating the way this whole, I saw before we hopped on, I just went to Roto World and did a quick scroll, see what was going on in the out there in the all the different newspapers. And uh, one of them was the Seattle Times reported. I would imagine maybe Seattle, you know, maybe Monday or Tuesday, just their workout start, right? And they say everyone fully expects, including DK Metcalf, said he's going to be there. Now they're represented by the same guy. It's not like DK, you know, I'm just waiting for my little old contract too, right? I mean, he's he is literally in the same boat. So I, I think over the next couple weeks. And really, it might be next week, depending if all three of these teams like are AJ Brown, DK Metcalf. Do they attend? Right? Do they just show up to work out? Because whether or not like he has a bonus or not, if Debo is the one of the three that isn't there, this story kind of goes to another level, right? Right. Do the 49ers expect when they're actually on the field and practicing in a, in a month for him to be there, or is it still up in the air? Yeah. Has he given them some sort of ultimatum? Why wouldn't the other guys do that? Like, why are they in a different financial situation? You think because it's a it'd be more a personal decision, not an agent driven decision. Yeah, because they're all in the same ballpark for the cash, and yeah. they're literally represented by the same human being. Yep. So it's not like a company mandate. Well, like, like Scott guys, Boris, we know how we know how any Scott Boris client's going to handle something, right? Wait and get paid. Yeah. Because of Scott, is Judge a Scott Boris guy? Um, that's a good question. If not, he will. If not, I he will be. He changed agents a while back. Uh, but I didn't think he was. PSI Sports Management. That's not Boris. Yeah. Um, Boris Corp. You know, and, and the reality is that I see a rod it in threes the other day at the T Wolves pregame. Um, you, see his, you know, his girlfriend. Yeah. Who I actually found on Instagram after the Packer game, immediately followed, you know, yep. she followed me back. Oh. And uh, they are still going pretty strong, guy. 
Like she is, she's sneaky because a lot of times they're not as public, but she'll do a lot of like picture from 30,000 feet, but it ain't in the Delta airline. It's like, she has been, her and A-Rod have, I mean, I think they're pretty hot. They're out there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the, the reality is like, uh, you know, who needed who more, John Lennon or Paul McCartney? It's just the two of them together are, per- I think Kyle and Debo are perfect for each other. It doesn't mean Kyle can't find somebody else to do some of this. And, and this is where it always gets to. You, like, like Ben and a, J-Lo? Like Ben and J-Lo. Like from a draft perspective, you know, can you get 85% of the production for 20% of the cost? Right. That's it's not always about can I replace this guy exactly. It's just I, how I, much I, of them can I get? I think you can think about that with a lot of players. I I don't think you can think always like that with your great players in their prime. Like I think like you go Lake and Tomlinson. We obviously are not going to pay him eleven million dollars a year, but we know fundamentally as a business, we have to look at it like we need to be able to replace a guy like that. Eighty percent of the player for. 10% of the cost is worth it for us. But when you have your all-time great game, like Trent Williams, there just is no option to do that. Debo Samuel right now, like I, I think you could be like, well, you get cost, you know, prohibitive, but you get a quarter of the player and be fucked. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's such a dominant, dominant game wrecker. Where that's where like college football is so different at the highest level, right? Like ultimately like Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, like they lose, uh, you know, Jared Davis and, you know, Devontae Smith and the two receivers at Ohio State. But every year you shoot like the the shotgun blast of like, we just signed the 20 recruits. So we're going to miss on a couple, but we're getting all these four and five stars. As long as we hit on 60% of them, the, the percent, we're just going to replace and replace. That is not how football works, right? Like look at Belichick. I mean, Gronk has been, I would say, quote unquote, a shell of himself. What he was in his peak, peak prime. But once he retired and then went to Tampa, I think Bill realized, like, I, I love tight ends. I need to get my tight end. So he goes and gets Jonu Smith and Hunter Henry. But, but he has to pay so much money. And ultimately, like, those guys, I bet every Patriot fan would be like, I know they don't like bringing the guy up because of what happened, but it still existed. Like, him and Gronk in their prime, like, that's, they're like 20% of what I witnessed, right? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. just not that. So you just replace Debo, like, there's a chance that it just doesn't exist. Most transactions are not, we get rid of Stefan Diggs and we get Justin Jefferson. Boop. That's a great example. That is clear outlier. Extreme outlier. And and I also think with Debo, we've seen him now playing enough postseason games that you can't just take numbers and go 80 catches. All right, this other guy will give me 63. It's like, yeah, but did you see when Debo makes the plays he makes? Right? They're 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 unique plays. Not all catches are created equal. Wouldn't you say in football too? I was texting with someone yesterday just watching uh the Clipper who they play? Oh, the Pels. Playoff NBA basketball, it's a fucking different sport. Like the NBA regular season, you could consider the minor leagues. Well, like, I saw just, one of the the T Wolves writers. Trying? One of the T Wolves writers wrote, like, you know, one unique thing is they're going to play a team like they didn't play full squads all year. Like no one's playing each other's best teams all year because always somebody's resting. Like that's a unique twist when we get to the postseason. But I heard I heard Windhorse tell a story probably in the last like six months. He didn't say the player, but he's like, you know, the difference between playoff basketball and the regular season. He's like this guy that played for the Miami Heat back when I was covering the Heat after their first playoff game in round one, one of the LeBron Wade years, either looks at LeBron or looks at Pat Riley, you know, or looks at Spolstra and it was like, is that really how all these are? I, I, he's like, I've never played harder in my life in a basketball game. He's like, is that, we still have to go, you know, to win this thing. We have to win 15 more of these? Like, yeah, bro, this is the playoffs. And I think that's what the NBA playoffs are fantastic when a good NBA playoff game, because the crowd, it feels awesome. An NFL football game, football is much closer, like a good regular season Sunday night game. Niners Rams is a fucking just a war zone. The playoffs, the, the gap, like the NBA is like 100%, right? In the NFL, it might be like 20%. But that 20% is a pretty big gap. And you just see, like you saw the Cowboys, you know, it's just, even CD is like, well, this is kind of a different level, bro. It's not that much different, but it's different. And bodies are getting fucking hitting a little harder. Refs a little less likely to throw a penalty flag on some physical stuff. And Debo is just, and this is Kittle too. And even Fred Warner, who had a rough season, you're like, God damn, this guy's flying around. You know, they just, and the Harbaugh teams had that, right? Like ready to go to war, win, lose, or draw. Yeah. We're ready for the fight. And you yep. know, 
and you see it every year, right? You're like, ah, is this guy truly? I remember being with the Eagles. We used to talk about that. Like, can this guy get you over the hump? Like, is this guy belong? when when you're talking about like a lot of money, the unit functional starters, whatever you some stuff's out of your control. The guys you're not paying that much money, but your star players, right? <laughs> like that's why the Eagles like love Jason Kelsey. The Kelsey brothers are just great examples, right? Like, you can win or lose the biggest game of the year. You just know those two motherfuckers are ready, right? War daddies, John. Absolute. And uh, to me, George, like I, I have no issue with George's, and really his only flaw is that he gets injured sometimes. That's just the nature of his position. But like, I like that guy on my squad. He plays playoff football every week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, speaking of uh, drafting guys and knowing what you're getting and not knowing what you're getting, how about your boy Kelvin Joseph? What was the deal? He was a passenger in a car. And the, the driver did a drive-by shooting like a month ago? I don't know if the driver did a drive-by shooting or they were just had a road raid incident. All I just know is someone got killed and shot from the car that he was in. And his attorney had just an all-time quote. This guy was their second-round pick last year. So it's not one of, like, Aaron Banks or... This It's a pretty big deal when your second... is in a car where someone gets killed and his attorney said, like, I mean, it's, it's not funny because someone died, but the quote, I, how can you I, I, attorneys, man, he was in a situation that escalated. That was out of his knowledge or control. Like just saying that, like someone got shot and killed and he was sitting next to the guy. And then it just doesn't have nothing happens till the middle of April. Like it's not like he was going around telling people. Right now, in fairness, if could have been bad timing, maybe he didn't know the guy and it was just the craziest shit ever and he's freaking out. But I don't know, man. That's that's an insane incident to be involved in. Really is. Absolute insanity. Uh, Kelvin apologizes to the Dallas community for being anywhere near this type of incident. How? Yeah, like he's just trying to get out of it completely. Right. One hundred percent. And ultimately, it goes back to the Chris Carter fall guy. Like, is this guy going to come out they shot and killed because that's murder and say that I just randomly picked this guy up or he didn't even know me? The problem is going to be there are crimes. Like, if he didn't say anything for a while and just hoped it would go away or he wouldn't be involved, that's going to be a problem, right? It'd be one thing if, you know, he immediately went to the police and what I was just involved in. It does not sound like that's the way it went down. No. 20 year old got shot and killed uh march 8 march 18th march 18th so a month ago a lot of lag time here guy second round pick i mean there are just things and i don't know we could look at what the cowboys scouting report said about this guy they might have loved him i mean draft a guy in the second round you don't draft a guy in the second round you don't like right would you see the uh might have been after the season when sabin kind of went viral it, it it looked like a coaching like a high school coaching clinic and, and Saban was just kind of going on this rant about like having your guys basically be your brother's keeper like in a football program in a football team like watch out for your guys mm -hmm. like always someone should always be watch out and he, and he basically used the rug situation he said this kid's life is over his career is over because no one was around no one in this situation said, bro, what the fuck are you doing getting in your car? Like, w w and his career's over. And he's like, this guy's going to go to jail for who knows how long. He never had an incident in my program. And he wasn't trying to be like ego about it, but he's just like, how does this stuff happen? You know? And this is always the thing. I remember as a scout and you talk to these guys, like, how's this guy going to handle money? How's he going to handle money? Who can answer that question? Besides like, you know, I was around Debo, loved the guy, he's awesome. Where I was around this guy, he's kind of a slappy. Might be a little easier now because the NIL, like this, yeah, this guy got like 500 grand and we we never saw him, <laughs> you know? It actually might, could make it a little, because before That's it was a like, good call. Well, it's not like you're bragging, you know, we did get this guy 400 grand cash, but I don't know how much his dad took, you know, that, that never came up. Now it's just the NIL. I mean, you, how often do you see some of these headlines? You're like, is he really getting this much money? What's going on? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Kayvon Thibodeau's a guy that had a lot of money, right? But didn't didn't you just wasn't there just a headline about a guy that just got eight million dollars? Tennessee. Well, so yeah, so Tennessee. There's a quarterback who's going to Tennessee. 
who plays seven on seven in pajama pants, <laughs> which I, I'm sure he'll be selling T- Tennessee brand pajama pants. He's like six, seven and they're calling him the $8 million quarterback. Now did he, I don't, you know, there was a report. They haven't totally, I don't think the last I saw they've confirmed that he is getting $8 million. I think that might be a little bit of a stretch for a headline, but there was a report that the, the Tennessee collective is like one of the first kind of big ones. That, which, is, which is almost like a venture fund for just for athletes. Yeah, it's just people put money in there, and then somehow the collective knows which athletes to direct the money to. But coaches aren't involved. But somehow the collective knows who to give the money to. Oh, but no coaches to se- are involved. Coaches aren't oh, allowed to be involved. To, you have to separate it from the program. Yeah, yeah. Now the programs have NIL programs that, like, you know, Middlecoff University, the Middlecoff Collective, is different is different than oh, so, the so program we have to match players with NIL. So you're saying technically it's illegal if you and I, if if I'm the head coach and you're my recruiting coordinator and yeah. we're at USC and, and fucking John Middlecoff, the star linebacker, and I go to our collective and I go, this guy's worth a million dollars. We should pay him a million dollars. I can't do that. It's up to them to determine his the, value. The coaches are not to be are not allowed to be involved with with the NIL stuff. Because part of it is like it shouldn't. I can't offer you cash to come to my program. Right. And you can't. Can, it's illegal for it to be an inducement, which is clearly what is happening. Well, it's like does the does the person running the register at the collective have like just twenty four seven rankings open? It's like oh, we should offer this guy a bunch of money, you know? Yeah. So think about the way it works in the NFL, right? Who determines the value? The head coach, the GM, and the salary cap. They talk about how good the player is, what his market Yeah, like, hey, coach, is. I just got you this $30 million uh, quarterback. Well, I didn't want him. <laughs> I don't like him. I think he's a turd. <laughs> yeah. So, but there's two things going on. There's NIL, which is an athlete's ability to just go out and make money. And then there's NIL, which is the collective gives them money and says, oh, it's for appearance fees. You know, like, whatever. Yeah. So, um, anyway, but yes, there was a a guy that he's being called the $8 million player. Again, I don't know. I think they're talking about it like, you know, I don't know specifically that situation, but I would imagine the conversations. Somebody texted me about another guy the other day. And they're like, yeah, I heard it's uh, $1.2 million for three years. You know, like, I was like, oh, is that a contract? Like, what are we talking about here? But think about this. I, I saw a Roto World headline. <laughs> might have been two weeks ago. Might have been a week ago. Clemson had their spring game. And the headline was... I can, I'll just say DJ. DJ really struggled. Yeah. And he obviously was a disastrous freshman year and it's clearly not going well. Yep. Well, I would say last year when NIL just started, now granted, it's the ground floor. He easily had one of the biggest deals. He was on the Dr. Pepper fucking commercial. Right. And it is a complete disaster. And if I bet if you looked at Dabo and said you could do that over, he would have said, yeah, we would have chose another player. Right. Because they clearly had access to all the top 10 guys and they chose him because he was the number one or number two guy, whatever you wanted to value at. But I, I, there's a chance. And I, if you ask Ryan Day or maybe uh, Nick Saban, I would imagine there is a top coach that, like, yeah, I saw some things in his game we didn't love as a player. We just didn't think because I I heard uh, who's the guy I know your buddies with him uh, that does the recruiting for ESPN. uh, Oh, Luganville? Luganville. You know him? Yeah, I know him well. Yeah, Lugs. so I heard Lugs on one time on a podcast, and he said from a scouting perspective, now it's, I don't even think he was doing like after the fact, like I didn't, he's like, well, if you really watch them, he didn't have great touch. It was just all power, and it was just obviously his size and potential, but from a quarterback standpoint, when you really studied it, it was a pretty flawed, elite, quote-unquote, prospect given that, and it's been a disaster. So, there are going to be a lot of just disasters in college that I think, you know, you're going to learn from when you draft. The information is going to be so much different when a guy like that, or just in some of these situations come out and you go, well, he's already made $2 million. How did he handle it? And the coach goes, he was fucking great. I mean, he was always one of the first guys here unfazed. Like you legitimately know it's not one of those. Well, I was never allowed to say this, but I heard through a booster and giving his family 500 grand and, you know, pretty great deal. No taxes. Uh, uh, as anyone will know here in March 18th, if you're listening to this or April 18th. Well, now they all have to pay. Well, now they have pay. But yeah. there's still shady stuff going on sure, as well. Sure. But obviously all the NIL money is above board. Uh, and I'm not saying this guy Clemson's was involved got, in a shooting, but it's just you're just you're you're dealing with human beings. Yeah. Clemson's got the DJ all over again in this year's. They have a five star number one QB who already is enrolled. 
Doesn't it feel like there's a 50 50 chance that there's a headline in the next six months DJ has entered the transfer portal? Yeah, I mean, I think it's legitimately a quarterback battle, and it feels like maybe it could be the Oklahoma Spencer Rattler situation again with Caleb Williams. I love it when a quarterback, I, this is UNLV, not like anyone cares, but clearly they made a quarterback decision, named a starting quarterback, and the other guy immediately just goes to the transfer portal. Like that's just that's just the society we're living in. You just, if you don't win the job, I'm out. Well, I love when a coach does the opposite, not love, but the other situation is the opposite where a coach doesn't name a starter, even though he knows who he's going to have his quarterback be because he doesn't want the guy to go into the portal. You know what I mean? That's the other one is you don't name a starter and you tell him it's a competition in the fall just so the other guy doesn't leave because you have to transfer by March 1st in order to be eligible for this year. You know what move that is? It's like you've been dating. I do know what move that is. <laughs> she, wa- she wants you to get on a knee, but you don't want to marry her and you're not going to marry her. But, you know, you, you enjoy, you know, some of the, you know, the, yep. the stuff that comes along with the, the. So you just push it back, push it back. But eventually you got to do it. Then you go your separate way. So the yeah. coach knows. <laughs> It's like, is she, is she willing to go Debo, not show up to OTAs? <laughs> really the push the envelope? The difference is, in that scenario, there's not necessarily a finite date. In college football, there is, right? You have to name one, like, week one, someone is starting. Yeah, right? well, and March 1st, you have to be on a team, or else you can't play that year. So there's a date for those transfers as well. So these Say next couple of weeks will be interesting. Like, if you're going to be in the portal, you have to transfer by March 1st. Uh, sorry, not March. I keep saying March. May 1st. In so order if you are not on a roster year. May 1st, I am not eligible to play in the fall. Uh, yeah, I think a grad transfer might be different, but if you're going through the portal, you have to you have to go by May 1st. Who has spots right now? Well, I guess well, they, well USC some other said guys might Lincoln transfer. He's taking 10 plus guys. Does he have 10 scholarships available? Yeah, he might, he did. He did he didn't some people aren't using them all during the early during the high school signing period, so they're saving them for the portal. God, this is a complicated Puzzle I know. That's together. why coaches hate it is because there's no off day. It like never stops. Jesus. And you and you never know like, hey, this guy that you would like from Iowa, a guard is transferring. He'll yeah, you immediately wait. start. You're like, fuck, I need a spot. Then can you for, can you kick a guy out? <laughs> well, that's the problem. You can't you can't rip a guy's scholarship away if he's academic if he's not in trouble and academically you can't kick him off. The team. I, well, I think you can I think you can create a spot you can't kick him out of school, but I do think you can take his scholar. I th- I think there's some weird when I way when I was to... involved, if a guy was doing the right things, and yeah, he just sucked. Like in the NFL, it'd be the equivalent of you would just cut. You couldn't just cut a guy because no, he wasn't good enough. If he was a if he was academically meeting all the requirements and it had zero off the field issues, so you're just now, if a guy hops in a portal, you sport. can take his scholarship immediately. See ya. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's not going to be here when you get back. John, let's tell the people about our friends at Buck Mason, buckmason.com slash ham. When I went uh, out to Walnut Creek on Friday night, I rolled into the bar and there was Middlecoff in his Buck Mason hoodie. It fit oh, in yeah. in the bar. And like a 1515 is a nice place. And there he was in the black hoodie and it looked good. We we rock the sweat, the hoodies all the time. You've been watching these videos. We wear the t-shirts all the time. Buck Mason's fantastic. We love it right now. You get a free t-shirt. With whatever you order when you go to buckmason.com slash ham. You know, guy, I just I ordered more shirts and uh, I used my mom's email, boom, got another free t shirt. <laughs> and so I got his credit. So Buck Mason, I mean, they got V necks, they have jackets, they have regular t shirts, they have the sweatshirt, really is fantastic. Like you said, I mean, nice restaurant now in California, but still, I just I fit right in. Uh, they have the curved hem tee. Is fantastic. G GQ loves it. I mean, you'll be looking. I have some of those short sleeve button ups. I have a white one and a black one that are always like, you know, when it it's for, I don't know what's up with the weather right now, but hopefully sometime soon it'll start being 80, 85 degrees. And you, you know, you're going out somewhere nice, but it's also kind of warm that you don't want to get too dressed up. It's an easy one that you look the part, you know, that little short sleeve button up, mm-hmm. it's like a pair of jeans and, mm-hmm. you know, a nice little player of loafers on. You're like, God damn, this guy's looking good. Yep. Uh, once you try Buck Mason, it'll be your go to too. Uh, I like the, there's, they got the slub, the, the, br- the brushed loop back hoodie sweatshirt. We both highly, highly, highly recommend. We've gotten some feedback from guys. My recommendation, I don't know if you've gotten this feedback too, John would be on the hoodie. Just order your normal size on the t-shirt. I would go up a size probably. Um, for me, I go up a size. I don't know if you went up a size. If you're tall, get the tall size. Uh, unless you like a really snug fit, then go with your normal size. I, I, order, I ordered a mid- I ordered, a, I ordered a medium and it was a little snug and I, I gave it to Brian Hawkins because his body type probably yep. can But I, I would just, if you size up 
from your normal if you if you you know if you've got a six pack then whatever but if you need if you want just a little looser while fit close. <laughs> while we're close if you want just a little looser fit i would size up the good thing is it's not going to be too long on you so if you normally wear a medium but you want a little looser fit just get a large and if you're tall just get the tall size and that'll work too um but i i love the uh the pima cotton tea the slub tea is a good tea but the pima cotton i think is an easier like walk into a bar on a friday night with it uh look but both of them are great so great b-u-c-k-m-a-s-o-n buckmason.com slash ham get a free t-shirt with any order you can order a t-shirt get another t-shirt i mean that's that you know that's the easiest way to do it but uh as i say love the hoodie get a free t-shirt that's great too buckmason.com slash ham to get the free tea with your first order that's buckmason.com slash ham we're also brought to you by our friends at indeed indeed.com slash ham if you don't have the players on the field with the right skills whether it's uh, breakaway speed elite playmaking ability you're going to have a tough time winning. The draft is nearly upon us. Your draft is here 24-7. The same goes for your business. Indeed is a fast, simple way to make sure you're hiring MVPs. Start hiring right now, guy. Start hiring right now. Indeed.com slash ham. Indeed makes it easy to hire great talent. According to Comscore, Indeed is the number one job site. Listen, we're all looking for people to hire. You run a small business. You're involved in HR in your business. Get off some of these random job sites. Go to Indeed.com slash ham. We'll immediately save your uh, business a little money because you get the $75 sponsored job credit. No big deal. Thank us later. You don't even need to thank us. Just go use it and uh, start hiring, start improving your business and start taking the next level. We got, we're almost halfway through 2022 guy. Where has the time gone? Mm. And you don't want to get left behind. You know, we're in, what are we already in the middle of, uh, I guess, the early part of, of, of Q2 as, as the kids say, uh, as the adults say, and then Q3, Q4. So get on it right now. Indeed.com slash ham. Yeah, the key is to upgrade that job post because with Instant Match, over 90% of employers get quality candidates as soon as they sponsor their job post, according to Indeed data. Candidates that you invite to apply through Instant Match are three times more likely to apply than candidates who only see it in a search. So start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash ham. Offer valid through April 30th. Go to Indeed.com slash ham to claim your $75 credit before April 30. Indeed.com slash ham. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Do it. All right. We haven't done a mailbag in a while. We thought we'd sprinkle in some mailbag at the end of this pod. Really quick. I just got to give a shout out. I, the, the Athletic, I, I had forwarded you the article, had written this article on uh, Cal Poly's star shortstop, who is the son of Larry Lee, the coach. Yeah. And they had written in the article that he might be a top three pick. And then I had kind of, I just read some different things that maybe not. Well, I was with our buddy who is very, very close with a, uh, a baseball scout. And I said, just ask them, is this guy really a top five pick? Like that seems kind of crazy. Like to be a top five pick at shortstop or se- you know, second, like middle infield, that's you're fucking incredible. Right. And so he texts his buddy who scouts for one of the major league teams. And he's like, you know, it's funny is I just saw him last night. He, I think Cal Poly's playing like Irvine. You know, he's playing down in one of the Big West schools. Now. He's like, yeah, bro, he's a lock to be a top five pick. Like, that's a pretty incredible accomplishment. And this is the program. Could, the story was he could have gone anywhere but wanted to play for his dad at Cal Poly. Wanted to play for his dad at Cal Poly. And, you know, listen, Cal Poly ain't Alabama or UCLA or whatever. But Ozzie Smith did go to school at Cal Poly. Like That was Mike Kruko and Ozzie Smith. But I'm pretty sure, I don't think Ozzie Smith was a top five pick. I have to go back and Google that one, but uh, Wizard of, uh, I was almost said Wizard of Westwood, but that would be John Wooden. Yeah. You're just the wizard. <laughs> yeah. Just the wizard. Uh, what we got here? Um, Brooks Lee. Great name. Uh, Brooks Sweet Robinson. Name. Who was he named for? Uh, hitting 406 with uh, uh, seven homers, John. F- an on-base percentage of 506. Plus three steals. Uh, he's got nine strikeouts in 133 ABs. Nine Ks. Johnny, he's got seven homers, and he struck out nine times. Fundamentally That's ridiculous. Sound. He struck out nine times, and he has seven home runs. He's almost as likely to hit a home run as he is to strike out. That's insane. That's insane. I can play. Oh, my God. To, to put it in perspective, in 1976, uh... Ozzie Smith was drafted in the seventh round. 
Now he was already playing semi professional baseball. Times were a little different. <laughs> yeah, hard to hard to comp. You know what I stumbled uh, upon on Friday night? I know you got things to do. I'll keep it quick. Apple TV has baseball games. I, I went to Apple I Plus to watch WeWork, and they just had a baseball game. I did the same thing. I clicked on it. <laughs> it was, But it was good. It was crisp. It's smart. It's meet people where they are. Like I'm, Most people aren't going to their TV guide. They're going to their streaming service, and bam, there's a game there. Okay. You, you want to hear my take? Amazon, Apple, maybe Netflix, but they're going to have all the life sports in our lifetime. They just have too much money. They're going to be able to offer. Obviously, Amazon's going to get football. I mean, they have Thursday night, but the ticket. Why wouldn't Major League Baseball just like sell a package that like app? Who's to say that Apple couldn't just own NBA? The package is up in uh, in 2024. Who's to say that like Amazon Prime just doesn't offer them double whatever the network just to get the get the programming? Yeah, <laughs> or Apple Plus, or who, you know whoever Hulu. I don't know. Feels like inevitable. Yeah, I think we're probably another like cycle away from them going full full streaming, like the NBA or whatever. You know, who's that? Well, I just think we're. I think it's gonna be at least another ten before the NBA just puts everything on stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you agree though? In our lifetime, it'll probably be hosted on all these companies that just have way more money than ABC, NBC, and Fox. Well, yeah, the, I mean, once the loyalty of the owners, like the generation that dies and their kids run it. The, the numbers that you're going to get presented if they're double the you just you won't care. It's why and they're all trying has. to pivot to Paramount Plus and you know streaming is where people are. That's just yeah. more people are likely to go to Apple Plus or Netflix and flip through that than to go to their TV guide and flip. Apple Plus is actually pretty impressive stuff. Apple Plus is good. Uh, what was the other thing I saw on Apple Plus that looked good? I don't know, but I, I clicked. I did the same exact thing on Friday night. I clicked on whatever game it was. Didn't. Again, I wasn't judging the broadcast. Like it just it looked it like a baseball there. game. Baseball was, game. Is that the one Katie Nolan's calling? I think she's on one of those because there, there's two different broadcast crew. Because there were two games on. There was also yeah, an Angels uh, Dodger game or something. Well, it was Dodgers Reds. I saw the other game. Whatever the other game was, Tampa someone. On. Yeah, they have a doubleheader every Friday night. Uh, do you want to jump into the mailbag? Yeah. So you go to uh, you go to Apple uh, Apple uh, Podcast. You leave us a mailbag question in that mailbag. You leave us a review. We appreciate a five star, but whatever. Somebody the other day left us a one star complaint about the audio. We addressed it. They came back with a five star. And said thanks for addressing it. So you know we're here to this is we're here. This is the suggestion box. Yeah, we don't run from the smoke. We do not run for the smoke. We want all the smoke. We run up the. We chimney. put a, we put a gas mask on. And we run right through it. We run up the chimney, John. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Uh, as always, real reviews from real people like you. Ryan, mailbag question. Says, before cutting Jimmy, would the front office consider a trade with the Niners paying a percentage of his salary? How much money is a draft pick worth? Uh, sorry, guys, I don't drink, so I'd give some pretty bad advice for a sports bar. That's okay. Just tell us a place you want to hang out if you're not a drinker. That's all good, too. Uh, so how much is a draft pick worth? And didn't you say the other day a draft pick's worth like first rounders worth like $10 million? Someone had texted me that they thought, give or take, you know, on average, depend. Obviously, the number one pick's worth more than the thirtieth pick, but I think if you just did the average, yeah. Would the Niners front office consider a trade where they pay a percentage of a percentage of a salary? Well, a second and third to the Rams, right, for the Broncos was worth basically eight million dollars in the in the Bronco in the Von Miller trade. <laughs> now it's two. That's two picks, obviously, but yeah. I mean, would you? I would eat eight million dollars for a second round pick, wouldn't you? Hundred percent. Yeah. I. <laughs> I also think this is. We talked about the Panthers the other day and a deal with them where you take Sam Darnold back, and in taking Sam Darnold back, you get a better pick. Like, let's say if Sam Darnold didn't exist, the Panthers would trade you a fourth for Jimmy, but I take Sam's eighteen million dollars and I get a third. Well, I'm I'm spending eighteen million dollars to get a better pick. That'd be another way to buy, quote unquote. To, yeah. to pay a percentage of Jimmy's salary. I, I'd be in that business for yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, it was the Brock Osweiler deal a few years ago, right? For the yes. Browns. They took on his money for a better pick from Houston. Was it Houston? I think a second, I think of basically a second round pick. We're going to trade for Remember Brock Osweiler. Remember, people were like, you shouldn't be allowed to do it. Some NFL people were like, this isn't allowed. They said technically it is illegal, but clearly people are kind of circumventing it because I'm not just exchanging you cash. I'm basically right. just eating the money. It's actually yeah. kind of genius. It is genius. But there's only so many players that kind of fall into that category. Yeah. Uh, good question. Next up, who would you rather have, Lamar or Deshaun Watson as your franchise QB from today on? I mean, how could you not? I'd have to go with Lamar or Jackson. 1,000. I mean, guy, I, I don't look at Deshaun Watson the same. And I'm not assuming he's guilty. I, I just, I, I question a guy's decision-making that, 
to be that famous, and he's a good-looking guy, good guy that has to just, again, one massage parlor, you, you meet someone, you, you hook up, whatever. Maybe it happens a couple times. The number in which he was doing it, because he had 18 people come to his defense. Like, it's, it wasn't just 22. It, I mean, you're talking like 50 women that just did that role. It's not like if he had just, you know, this guy was dating 50 women, like, okay, whatever, you know. These were massage. He went for a massage. I, I can't look at him the same. Yeah, I, I don't. You, I, I don't. I, I question his decision making. At best, at best, you can you question his decision making. Yeah. Uh, next review. This is from B Kerr. Says these two guys bring the heat with their intelligent yet goofy dialogue. They really break down the nuance nuances of the game that the average podcast doesn't. Mailbag question. <laughs> Thank you. Mailbag question. I don't think LeBron will ever win another championship, and here's why. LeBron's like the old, rich, and successful guy. He will not change his ways. His whole career since Miami, he's built his teams with the idea of loading up on older yet experienced and proven players. This was all good when he could physically dominate, make it up for the older players' physical limitations. He did that year after year, including eight finals runs in a row. All that wear and tear is taken away. He had the advantage of his physical dominance at both ends of the court, and he hasn't learned that he needs to trust young talent. What do you think about this? Will LeBron ever build a team where he is the complimentary star? Because if not, then I agree with this. Well, he tweeted on the night of the Bill Belichick of basketball actually lost, Ty Lue, that he's the best coach in the game. And it kind of felt like, is he trying to pivot? Would he want to go to the Clippers? <laughs> Where he could stay in L.A. but go to the team that's better somehow? Like, yeah. I, I wouldn't put anything past LeBron. I wouldn't either. Like, like I, if you told me LeBron tries to get his way out of the Lakers to just some other sweet situation, I think it's 100% on the table. Because th at this point in time, Nothing matters besides scoring more points to fucking pass Kareem and trying to win more titles, right? And this, well, and waiting for Bronny. I think that is up in in question, given how he is not viewed as like an NBA prospect, though. Well, that, that feels a little media driven more than LeBron driven. I feel. You think LeBron? That's not LeBron's thing. He I'm not saying he, th he might have thrown it out there, but then they've taken it to another level. Guy, he oh, doesn't okay. start on his own high school team. Now his high school team is. Might as well be the Kentucky Wildcats. Sierra Canyon. <laughs> we doesn't have to start on LeBron's team either. Uh, I think LeBron could win another title if he's willing to not be the best player on there, to be a complimentary player. Do you think that Bronny, if let's just say Bronny turns out to be like a fringe Division One prospect, like when I say Division One, like you could go like compete for a starting role at like, you know, a power five, but not like Kentucky or whatever. He's just a lock to become an NBA player. LeBron by that time will be like 40 years old. And if he's not good, I I would bet against it, I guess. would be. I mean, I could see him run. getting a start. Being on a, you know what I mean? 10 day just to make this history happen. Do you think I he actually LeBron, LeBron would be running this team? Do you, do you imagine, bro? You think? Isn't, Bron, isn't LeBron losing more juice, though? Uh, I think there, there's always going to be somebody who gives him some. And again, you don't even have to run the team to, hey, LeBron, you're here. You want to do a thing with Bronny? Bronny's a G League prospect level talent. Yeah, we can do it. We can do a game. Well, do you think that LeBron's kid plays at college or do you think he goes to the G League thing? G League. Yeah. Next up from Danowell, Seahawks fan. Been a listener for about four years. Always been fun to listen. You guys gripe about your struggles with Russell. Now I fear that is over. What do you say to a down and out Seahawks fan who's convinced we're going to we're going to go into 22 with Drew Locke as our guy? Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. I do think that you mentioned this on the podcast, I think on Thursday, because it happened real time when they signed Drew Locke. I, I, I do think that takes Baker Mayfield out of the running. Because I, I don't think, if you watch John, I, I think John Schneider legitimately thinks something in Drew Locke. And like we talked about, the ego of like, I love this guy coming out. I think he's in a much better situation now even though Russell's in the same situation, everyone thinks Russell's in this great situation now. It's like, I thought Denver had this great situation. They were just missing a quarterback, right? They had receivers. They had a running back. They had a good offensive line, and Drew Lock sucked. He couldn't even win the starting job against Teddy two yards. But I don't know. But I mean, like, I, where is Baker going to play? That, is there a chance that they're just forced to cut him and eat the cash? Yeah. Kind of feels like that's on the table. Because who is, I mean, you say what you want. Jimmy's costs more and all that, but at least Jimmy is just walk into the building. There's no problems. Yeah. People like him. People like him. He just went to Augusta, hung out, came back. No one knew he was there. 
Jimmy was at Augusta. Yeah. Well, Travis Matthews or something. Well, I don't know. I that's well because there's no camera, so you don't see pictures going. Well, the internet off. figured out that's where that Hooters was, but I had also heard some. The, I had heard that he was at Augusta on the grounds or sources. I you just listen to people talk about when they go. You just randomly like. Oh, I just bumped into John Elway. Oh, I just bumped into Roger Goodell. Like, I, I think so you can just bump into people in the crowds, and no one can take a picture of you, right? Uh, so Bryson like, DeChambeau was in the crowd. Yeah, so you're actually pretty protected of just yeah. no one can bombard you. Can you imagine if, like, at Waste Management, you just Jimmy Garoppolo is walking around? How many chicks are taking pictures with him? Uh, 50 Cent Rocks. This is a uh, five-star thank you. Ham pod, my go-to during the off-season and regular season for good reason. Rhymes, not intentional. Oh. It just feels like you're talking sports with your buddies. I'll forever be grateful for them for talking me off the ledge during the peak Mac Jones mania. Keep up the awesome work. Consider me a fan for life. Oh, not even a question. Just a, just a compliment. I appreciate that. The positive vibes. Uh, Mac Jones mania. Remember that? Probably closer than I realized. It's closer to being a, the, the Niners draft pick. Yeah. I. Yeah. That one would have been. It was real. That was real. I don't think right now we'd be feeling pretty. We'd be feeling great about it. Right now, we'd be having conversations like, are we sure he's better than Jimmy? That would be one of our conversations after the season. Now, maybe Kyle would have made him look better than he looked in New England. I don't know. Well, would they have made the playoffs? I, Mac threw I a decent know. amount of picks for the Patriots. Yeah, I uh, Mac is what we thought he was. Cap. Pro bowler. I know. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging with us. Uh, whatever you celebrate, happy that to you. Have a great week. We're counting down less than two weeks to the draft. Looking forward to all the content. Thanks for hanging. Monster Ball Soup time. Reporting for duty. (laughs)